Hello. Good morning. <laughs> it's the next day. I'm just having my morning coffee trying to wake up and uh, I'm finding that just getting this out is helping me. And um, I'm starting to feel like to hell with anything else. I matter. And uh, it matters if I am if I am healthy, if I am mentally healthy. And anything that helps me feel that way, I'm going to do. And I'm what I'm discovering is getting out my feelings about certain things that I had um, that has happened is very helpful to me. And I had a great word for it, but <laughs> I even went to the th the thesaurus because I couldn't. I had it in my mind, and I couldn't think of the word. And it's it's not even in the th in the thesaurus. So whatever. Um, that's what happens when you write a lot, <laughs> and you use archaic words. Anyway, this this is to finish up the the video that I did yesterday, that I had to cut short because it was getting too long, and. Uh, having to do with keeping it upbeat, trying to keep it upbeat, and also um, just stu stupid things that I had to unfortunately learn the hard way. It's amazing what happens when you're naive. When you're in your 40s and you're so stupid because you didn't have any, um, you didn't do the dating scene when you were younger and you didn't do the bar scene when you were younger. So you're like 40 something and you're totally clueless. <laughs> so. Um, when a bartender, I mean, this guy, I really did think we were friends. He would, um, he, he came to me for advice too. It wasn't completely one-sided. He came, he came to me for advice, um, financial advice. He was frustrated because his wife spent too much money and, uh, frustrated because she laughed too loud. <laughs> and I pointed out, you know, that, hey, she has a sense of humor. You know that's a, that's a that's a huge thing, that's a good thing. And I told him the grass is always greener. The grass always seems greener on the other side, but it really isn't. You know, um, although I I I can't say that I'm sorry I left my marriage. That anyway, I don't want to go off track too too far. I just feel like I deserved a better situation than I was in in my marriage. But. When you're, when you're just, this is just more helpful bits for women who might be clueless, which I highly doubt anybody's as clueless as me. When a bartender urges you to stay after work because he wants to smoke cig cigars with you, uh, don't do that. <laughs> just don't do it. It's like, okay, why, why would you think that a, a, a bartender or a man would want to smoke cigars with you? I look back now and I'm like, hard to believe that I that I <clears throat> thought that, that that was what was going on. And uh, I mean, and it kept us up late. I had to, we had to wait for the, the, uh, the uh, janitors to come. I don't know why, but we had to wait for the janitors to come before we could leave the restaurant. And so that dragged it, dragged it on and, and that gave him more time to try to <laughs> make me feel like you know if I was a friend if I was a real friend I would be supportive and I would I would be there for him like he had be, been there for me so yeah little things like that big huge uh, signs that maybe you're you're in a bad place and you should just leave and go home and uh, the bad thing for me is or the stupid thing for me is I I've, I fell into it twice I fell for it twice right after this thing happened and I was waking up all very um, mortified and confused and unhappy and worried about worried for the friendship worried that I had killed the friendship that meant a lot to me you know I immediately started communicating to him that I was confused and and I thought he was responding to that I thought he was actually concerned about the mental state that he left me in because you know, I had a, I had another friend that I would go sing at the China Clipper, and uh, and he overheard me talking to this friend about going over there, and he he wanted to know well basically he wanted to know where we were going where I was going after I left his bar so I told him and and he he 
indicated that he might be joining us after he got off work. So, and this was like just maybe a week, a week later. So I was quite happy about this. I thought that, you know, he was coming over and, and we would get to talk and have a heart to heart. And I could understand what was going on and, and where our friendship stood after this, this thing that happened. And <laughs> he did show up and I was frustrated because we couldn't talk because my other friend was there at the table and we were singing. Uh, at one point he was up singing and this Scott looked at me and said, why are you why are you upset? And I'm like, well, I was hoping we could talk. And then he suggested that I go back to his to where he where he works, which is just down the street from the China Clipper and meet in the parking lot. So I did thinking that, you know, after he took my friend home because somebody needed to at that time, my friend didn't have a, a vehicle. Um, he would meet me in the parking lot and we would have a talk. Well, he did show up in the parking lot, and unfortunately, it wasn't what I thought, and it wasn't what, uh, it wasn't the talk that I thought. And again, I had been drinking the whole night, and he had not. So I was at a disadvantage, and yeah, so twice I was stupid. Twice I thought that, uh, this is something I had to do to keep a friend, to, to, to save a friendship. So, uh, yeah, when somebody fucks you over and you walk away and feel like you've, well, you're all worried and stuff and you have this major head game going on and the guy thinks that, um, or you think he's going to talk to you and then he only makes it worse. Uh, that's when the real intelligent people go, okay, this, this is not a friend. They don't hang on, they don't hang on for several more years going to the bar over and over and over, hoping that it will start to make sense or he will drop enough hints that you understand what happened and whether or not you're still friends and stuff like that. So that's it. That's just my final little bit about, uh, that wonderful time in my life. And like I said yesterday, um, it's hard it's hard for me to, to believe that none of those people cared for me for real I tried really hard to believe that they did but I'm sorry when um, somebody is is really really sad and they've had a bunch of bad stuff happen in their life back to back to back you don't you don't get mad at them for having too much too many problems and 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 okay, you're, you've just had one too many problems, and we just can't deal with you anymore. And we're not your friend anymore. <laughs> you know, I'm really sorry that I took up with this guy who I thought was my friend and took care of him and pushed my emotional health to the limit between him and losing my husband and my mother's mental unraveling all happening at the same time. That, that was pushing me to the limit, and then him doing what he did which sent me over the edge into a very serious depression. And then this guy at the bar doing his little thing, his little number on me. And then the uh, campaign, I, I guess is the best word, or sh it sure seemed like a campaign that was mounted against me after this happened too. Well, it was like, it was, they weren't very happy with me before because I was always so negative, but it's like it just got so much worse after. Like, they picked up on the fact that the bartender didn't want me there anymore, and they were doing their best to help him get rid of me. So it was just a long string of bad things, and yes, I was I was turning to my friends a lot. I was I was hoping for support a lot. I was I was leaning on my friends, and I guess I guess um, that was just you know. That was, I, I, they, my friends went bye-bye. I, I was asking too much for them to be there for me um, every now and then when I'd see them at the bar, because that's the only place I saw them. You know, it's not like I went over to their house or uh, sat in their living room and, and took away their, their time from themselves. <laughs> in fact, anyway, whatever, this is going off track again. I'm just, I feel like I deserve real friends. Friends who can be there for me and not hold it against me that they had to be there for me. 
I hold it against the guy who was sick that I was there for him because of the way he's treated me ever since. Barely concealing his disgust or his contempt for me. You know. And, uh, anyway. Whatever. <laughs> um, I'm happy to be in a situation where I don't have any really any friends to talk to except online or on the phone. Um, it's, it's helping me to be independent and helping me to be stronger, not having to rely or, or needing to rely on other people to, to, to lean on <clears throat> when I'm having a bad day. So it's probably in the end it's going to be something that is good for me, that I'm not going to be so dependent anymore on any one person um, or on my friends. So that's it. I'm off to work. Thanks for listening.